uh, welcome to uh, the members of the media. The Vegas Golden Knights are uh, pleased and excited today to announce the acquisition of Jack Eichel from the Buffalo Sabres. In return uh, for Jack, we have traded Alex Tuck, uh, Peyton Krebs, a first round draft choice in 2022, which is top 10 protected, and then a second round draft choice in 2023 in return for their third round draft choice in 2023. So a rotation of picks in the 2023 draft. With uh, Alex Tuck, he's a, a member of our original team, player that we acquired from Minnesota uh, in expansion. He's uh, gone from being a good young prospect to a tremendous uh, young player in our organization. He's a quality person. Wish him nothing but the best. Thank him for uh, his time uh, in our organization. He was a really uh, exciting player that, uh, you know, being uh, from New York, I think will uh, do great things for the Sabres organization. In Peyton Krebs, uh, a quality young man, uh, a high draft pick of our, uh, of our team, and a player that had made the NHL uh, right out of camp. I think he's going to have a long career as a real uh, productive forward. He's a player that uh, coaches love, whether it's his coaches in junior, his coaches in Canada's national junior team. Uh, last year, his time that he spent uh, in the American Hockey League with our team in Henderson, and uh, and then this year with uh, with our NHL team under uh, Pete DeBoer. So uh, again, with Peyton, we wish him uh, a great career. I uh, I hope that he does really really well. In Jack Eichel, we are getting uh, a player that I think is one of the top players in the league, one of the top centers in the league. He's in the prime of his career as a player who's just turned 25 years old. It addresses a need in our organization. It, it uh, you know, for me, when you look at what uh, an NHL contending team should look like, he's a really important piece uh, of that. I know when we brought in Alex Petrangelo, one of the, or part of the motivation behind that addition was a Stanley Cup champion needs a defenseman like that. And we feel the same way about an elite center. And Jack, uh, Jack gives us that. Uh, the price was high uh, for him, obviously, in the terms of what uh, we have sent to Buffalo. But at the same time, for a player of, uh, of this ilk, it should be high. Um, with that, I would open it up uh, to questions. I guess I could probably uh, take a guess at the first couple of questions and just uh, just mention. You may have heard uh, uh, that he has a neck injury. Uh, uh, Jack and his team have been uh, working diligently to sort out uh, what their next steps are with respect to surgery. He will have surgery. He will have uh, the ADR, which is artificial disc replacement. It's uh, unique in uh, in relation to uh, into uh, NHL players. It's not necessarily that unique in terms of society, but there's uh, never been an NHL player have uh, this type of surgery. Um, we have a lot of respect for the work that's gone into this uh, from uh, his agent, his second opinion doctors, the specialists and experts that he's seen uh, in this field will uh, will defer to, uh, to their wishes and respect uh, the choices that they make based on uh, knowing how much work they've done to put themselves uh, to prepare themselves for surgery and obviously uh, they're acting in what they believe is the best interests of Jack's uh, health not only in the short term but the long term and uh, we completely uh, understand and respect that so obviously that's going to be a question that would have uh, been asked first so maybe with uh, with that I'll open it up uh, to questions. Thanks Kevin. Uh Hi, Jesse. With Mark Stone and some other guys on this team, have been able to take advantage of situations where players that wouldn't normally be available is available, I guess. Do you feel like this is another one of those? And then how happy were you with your value? I can hear Jesse, but I don't think that mic is working. Yeah, they can hear him. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the NHL is a always evolving league. There's situations with respect to players' contracts that uh, might make them available. There's situations with salary cap that might make players available. There's situations with the wishes of players. I think you see now uh, a lot of star players are 
um, you know, looking at shorter deals to maintain a little more flexibility or control on their future. So there's different situations that uh, present themselves, and uh, we're not always interested in every uh, every situation that uh, that comes forward. There's certain players that uh, we have aggressively, uh, you know, gone after and tried to bring into our organization. Uh, Jack is one of those, and you know, the, the age of the player, he's he's uh, 25 years old. When you look at, uh, you know, the National Hockey League, uh, I guess as a whole, uh, who those top centers are, when you look at the Western Conference and you've got, you know, a Connor McDavid, you've got a Nathan McKinnon, you've got an Anzi Kopitar, you go to the East, you've got, you know, your Barkovs, your Barzells, Crosbys, Malkins, uh, I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm missing uh, a few, but you've got that elite layer uh, of player uh, that uh, I think Jack uh, comfortably uh, slots into and because of that and, and again uh, you know based on what I would say um, you know that we've identified as a need if we could address it uh, this way we uh, we felt that we would not be uh, doing our organization justice to uh, uh, to fail to pursue it so uh, that's uh, that's the approach that we took that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to complete a trade there's lots of teams and uh, our own included where you have discussions with teams and there's not uh, there's not a finish line in sight or a fit or uh, or a price that teams are comfortable with uh, either giving or receiving. So, um, you know, when Jack Eichel was available, when it was apparent that he uh, may be moved, I guess what we knew to start with is we were interested. And from there, uh, that brings us uh, to today. Yeah, that's a good question, Kyle. And, and there's some unknowns, and uh, you know, we we've been uh, you know more of an observer to that process than a participant. First of all, he wasn't our player, so uh, we don't have the you know the right or the ability to weigh in with uh, with our opinions. You know, what what's been done at our end is our medical people are uh, abreast of what they have been doing. When I say his team, I refer to uh, uh, his representation with, uh, with CAA, Pat Brisson. And, uh, you know, and I've been aware of what's uh, been going on through my discussions with, uh, with both Buffalo and uh, his representatives. And, uh, you know, as I, as I touched on, um, we're respectful of what they want to do. Uh, you know, why, why wouldn't his people want what's best for him? So uh, none of us in this room have the level of expertise that would be required for, uh, for an opinion. Uh, I, uh, you know, I defer to the people that he's entrusted uh, uh, himself and his health to, uh, to, make, uh, to make that decision. And we'll you know, obviously uh, have a hand in uh, next steps, uh, rehabilitation, return to play, you know, all those types of things. But uh, the decision of the surgery is one that we respectfully defer to uh, to Jack and uh, his representatives. And same here with CBC. Couple things. First off, best case scenario, when do you expect Jack to be able to play for Vegas? And secondly, considering the name issue, how much of a gamble is it? Well, um, it's really challenging to give you a time frame because it's never been done in this sport. Um, I'm told that Jack has been able to be uh, quite active in terms of training uh, while he's injured, uh, even being on the ice. It's contact that he would not be uh, cleared to, uh, you know, uh, endure. I, I, I keep thinking four to five months, uh, three to four months, but but I uh, I say that because I, I, I see you all grab your pens and write it down. We, we don't know. We, we really don't know, and, I, and I'm not trying to suggest that we do know, but uh, you know that might be the best guess I can give you right now. And the, the second question, sorry. Oh, yeah. You know, again, I guess we, we look at uh, the surgery in general terms has been uh, uh, people in uh, 
you know, martial arts have had this surgery, people in contact sports have had this surgery, no one in hockey has had this surgery. So um, does that put some uncertainty into it? I, I guess it does. Do we have a comfort level that he's going to return to full health? We do. Well, when you watch uh, when you watch Jack play, um, size, speed, uh, great playmaking ability, uh, incredibly good hands and shot. His release is uh, you know special uh, in terms of how quickly the puck comes off his stick. Uh, his ability to transport the puck up ice. Uh, he. Uh, picks up a loose puck in uh, your end, and and then you're in their end. Uh, he's got that type of uh, that type of speed. He's going to uh, you know be a real important player on our power play. Um, you know, just every key situation uh, in a game that you you know need that top player to uh, to be involved. So again, the the list of names that I gave you earlier of who some of those players are around the league. When you look at their usage, that's the same type of uh, responsibility that Jack uh, will have with us. And uh, you know, I believe the other thing that you sometimes you know, overlook because uh, the first thing that you see with Jack is the talent. Uh, he's extremely competitive. He's an extremely competitive uh, person. Um, I really feel that he is going to have a lot to prove, and he is going to embrace uh, embrace this challenge. Now open up the questions over Zoom. Raise your hand below. We'll do our best to get to you. We'll start with David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi Kelly, I'd like to go back to the summer and a couple of the moves that you made uh, to clear some salary cap space. Uh, did you have this move specifically in mind uh, when you made those moves? Um, no. If you're giving me credit for that, I don't know that you even are. Uh, you're giving me too much credit. Um, no, these things are always evolving, David, and uh, you know we're like a lot of teams. The salary cap is uh, uh, you know a real uh, tight process to manage. Uh, it will continue to be a tight process for us uh, to manage, but uh, you know the, the the moves. You know, I think you look around. A lot of teams, when they have an opportunity to create a little bit of flexibility, they try to do it, and I think that likely. Uh, speaks somewhat to some of the moves we made, uh, David. I think they were uh, moves at the time made uh, made standalone for the reasons that I would have explained at that time. But uh, you know, obviously, that's you know that's part of it. When the, when those uh, moves take place, it does give you a little bit of flexibility in the event that uh, you know things change, right? But it wasn't it wasn't related specifically at that time to these discussions. Next, we go to Justin Emerson. The Las Vegas Sun. Hi Kelly. Also on the salary cap, obviously right now it's not an issue with players on injured on injury, but later in the year uh, it could be. Do you kind of have a plan for how that might shake out, or do you kind of look at it as an evolving situation that you'll address when it needs to be addressed? Well, I think uh, when we have these media availabilities, you often ask that question, or or one of your colleagues ask that question and uh, you know as I as I sort of just spoke to it's uh, it's an ongoing uh, uh, dance that uh, you know capologists around the National Hockey League uh, have to be uh, adept at as we speak we've got uh, in excess of 30 million dollars that's either on uh, long-term injury or eligible to be on long-term injury so uh, that uh, takes any immediate uh, pressure off of our salary cap. You do have to ask yourself uh, what happens if we return to full health and yet uh, sometimes you never return to full health. Uh, we've never experienced anything quite like what we're going through right now. One of the downsides of uh, injuries uh, like we have currently is they sometimes lead to more injuries as uh, from overuse of players and that type of thing. So uh, you know, if and when that poses a, a challenge for us, uh, Justin will uh, address it at that time. I guess, you know, all things considered, we're we're happy to have uh, Jack Eichel as part of our organization and prepared to deal with that if need be. 
Time for a few final questions this morning with Kelly. If we go to Nick Katsunika with NHL.com. Hey Kelly, just want to hammer you for some details. Uh, when and where uh, will Jack have surgery? Can you give us any details on just the due diligence that your medical staff did? Did you examine him? Then lastly, like when he does return, do you have any idea how long, there's a difference between coming back on the ice and playing to your potential. Any idea how long that process will be to get him where he needs to be? Um, I do not know where he will have surgery. I believe that uh, they have shortlisted that to, um, you know, two or three possibilities. I, I expect he will have surgery quite soon. I would uh, I would tell you that. Um, you're you're asking questions, Nick. Uh, you're, you're not at, you're not only asking when will he, will he return to play. And then how much longer after that will he be playing at the top of his game is, is I think what you asked me. And, uh, you know, those are impossible questions to, uh, to answer. I, I, I think what we do uh, believe is he will make a full recovery. Uh, we do believe if he makes a full recovery that he'll return to form. With respect to exactly what that time frame, he has not played hockey since March. So that, uh, you know, will... You know, there'll be a period of time required for him to return to form, assuming the surgery goes uh, exactly how as they intend and his rehab goes exactly as. And there's just too many, uh, too many variables there, uh, Nick, to say with uh, with much certainty. Uh, you know when he'll be uh, in the position you describe. We'll take two final. I, I guess the only thing, Nick, I, I, I might, I might just, I might just add, Nick. Sorry. Uh, you know the only thing we are sure of is that. You know the surgery should happen quickly, and uh, and we're, you know, optimistic that uh, that it will go as planned. So sorry, sorry, I can't be more uh, more clear for you there. Next, we'll go to Ben Goats, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi Kelly, you mentioned at the beginning how you know you identified a number one center as kind of a need for your organization. Um, was that something when you evaluated, you know, this group that's gotten close but um, not quite back to the Stanley Cup final from the first year? Did you view that as something that could help you take the next step? Yeah, I, I, I should have done a better job uh, of explaining it because uh, you've all heard me say, you know, as recently as this summer, I really like our centers, uh, and I do. Uh, I really like the depth we have at that position. I like the people we have at the position. This is different, okay? So we weren't in the market necessarily for another centerman. Uh, in fact, we were not in the market for another centerman, but this isn't just another centerman. So, so I should uh, differentiate that from some of the discussions that, uh, that we've had in the past. So uh, your question again then, uh, could you just refresh me on exactly what it was that you're asking, sorry? It just did you view you know this as a pressing need a number one yeah. for the organization yeah. in order to get back to the Stanley Cup final? No, but I you know I guess I would I would uh, draw the comparison of Alex Petrangelo. I don't think we felt we had a pressing need for a number one defenseman. Uh, when you look at I think at that time it was Tampa that won the Stanley Cup. When you look at the makeup of their team, when you look at a headman, when you look at Stanley Cup winners. And you know what you kind of believe in your in your mind and your heart that you think you need to have on on those teams, you know that's why we were interested in Alex Petrangelo. We weren't in on a bunch of other defensemen or or, uh, or that type of thing. I would I would use the same uh, analogy and comparison with respect to Jack Eichel in relation to our centers. We we weren't in the market elsewhere for centers. This was uh, this was interest that was. Uh, solely determined by the quality of the player that was available and and to the point I made earlier uh, you know I believe if you look at Stanley Cup champions an elite center is uh, is certainly a big big part of that you can go back you know as many years as you want but uh, uh, that's uh, that's generally what you see is in terms of the makeup of a team they have to have that elite center they have to have that number one D they have to have uh, great goaltending so those are all things that uh, you try to you work towards if you can, and uh, we were able to in this situation. Final question this morning goes to Michael Trikos, Post Media. 
Hi Kelly, thanks for doing this. Uh, whether it's Pacioretty, Stone, Petrangelo, and now Eichel, this is a team that's not afraid to go big game hunting. Uh, I think only five players are remaining from that first year of expansion. What message are the Vegas Golden Knights sending uh, by continually being involved in these big deals? Well, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, we're not interested in every big deal. Uh, quite frankly, there's lots of players that you hear might be available or, uh, or you know are available that we are not interested in when you look at what uh, we're trying to accomplish with our team. The players you mentioned, um, you know, I think it speaks for itself why you'd be interested in those players. And, uh, you know, I've said on different occasions that it's, uh, it's easy to sit and do nothing but uh, I don't think you're doing the best service to your organization if you uh, aren't trying to improve your team and, uh, and build, uh, build a winner. So uh, in terms of the message to the players, I think that uh, that message gets uh, misconstrued a little bit. I think the players in our dressing room uh, love the fact that we provide as an organization every possible resource that they would ever want to be the best that they can be. And we do everything as an organization that we can do to try to help them win. So uh, I know that I've had conversations with players before that have been in uh, dressing, room where, dressing rooms where the good older players are getting traded away and how discouraging and disheartening that is for a player. So when you ask about our uh, dressing room, what our players think, I think that's what uh, uh, you would find. With respect to the quality of the people in there, we've got uh, great leadership uh, in our room with our captain uh, Mark Stone, we've got former captain Alex Petrangelo, we've got a former captain in Max uh, Pacioretty, Jack Eichel is a former captain, Riley Smith is an original uh, Golden Knight who provides great leadership, your Jonathan Marsh, so is your Braden McNabbs, uh, you know, I can go down the list, Robin Leonard, I can go down the list of guys that provide uh, really strong leadership uh, for our team. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a longer answer probably than you expected, but it just gives me the chance to sort of speak to it on a, uh, a couple of different levels.